Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be doing polynomials divided by polynomials. And let me just give you a little short story, a super tiny story, about whenever I was in algebra. When my teacher taught me this in eighth grade, I missed that day. When I came back the next day, people were doing this, I had no idea how to do it. So you guys are lucky that you have my videos and you have other videos on YouTube, so that way if what I'm saying doesn't make sense for how to do these things, you can find the answer still. Back in my day, which was just like 10, 12 years ago, um, I just had to deal with it and I just had to guess and try to figure it out on my own because my teacher was crazy. Let's start off by doing it with an example. We have 10x squared plus 9x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. This does match what you have in your polynomial book. When you have multiple things on the top of the fraction and multiple things on the bottom of the fraction, we normally don't split the fraction apart. So what we do instead is we do long division, just like we used to at the start of the year whenever we were doing like 8 divided by 2. You figure out how many times this number 2 fits into this number. It would be 4. 4 times 2 makes 8. And then you subtract. We're going to do those same steps to do this division. What's in top, the numerator is getting divided by the denominator. The bottom part is doing the dividing. So that means it's on the outside. That means that it's on the outside of the division symbol. On the inside is the numerator. Something that's important whenever you're doing these numerators, and it's also why I had you write down that little fact that polynomials should be written from the highest power down. This thing needs to be written from the highest power down, and then whenever it comes up, I'll show you what to do in the special case. Then. Doing this division looks really weird. How am I supposed to fit 2x plus 1 and a 10x squared? And really, you don't. All that you're trying to do is you're trying to find how can I make this first part, the only part that has the variable, or the part that has the highest variable. How do you make this part that has the highest variable on the outside become this thing? How can a 2x become a 10x squared? You have to multiply it by something. 2 times something makes 10, and that number is 5. x times something makes x squared. That would be x. When we're doing division, the goal is how can this thing on the outside become that first piece on the inside? And the answer is by doing a 5x. Now you do 5x times 2x. 5x times 2x makes, let me get this little thing out of the way, this multiplication makes 10x squared. But, good thing I just taught you distribution because this 5x is also going to multiply the 1. We only multiply that second part after we've chosen that number on top and we're distributing back. 5x times 1 is a plus 5x. We're going to put those in parentheses and put a minus sign in front. We're going to subtract from 10x squared plus 9x we're going to subtract 10x squared plus 5x. 10x squared minus 10x squared makes 0x squared. 9x minus 5x will make a plus 4x. And you bring down the remainder. This is 0x squared. We don't need it. All we need is the 4x plus 2. Then let me erase these lines. Now we have to find out, how does 2x become a 4x? For 2x to become 4x, we have to do a, we have to multiply by a positive number. So I'm putting a positive. 2 to get to a 4 is a times 2. For x to become an x, for x to become x, you don't have to do anything. So that if we did put a variable up here, whenever we multiply the 2x and the 2x, it's going to make a 4x squared. And once we do our subtraction step, we're not going to be able to subtract this from that. So let's make sure that we don't have a variable up here. We just need the number 2. Then we do 2 times 2x. 
makes 4x. 2 times 1 makes a plus 2. We're going to throw those in parentheses and subtract them. The reason why we put that parentheses there is because you're going to forget, I promise you, most of you are going to forget that this minus sign is not only going to this first one, but we are also subtracting this second one. So we have 4x minus 4x, that's 0. 2 minus 2 is also 0. That means we have no remainder. And what is on top of this division symbol is our quotient, which is the answer, 5x plus 2. Once you have your answer, you either check yourself. The only way you know that that's actually the right answer is either you check yourself or you double check your work. So the first thing you should do is you should double check your work that you had written. The second thing you should do is you should do 5x plus 2. If this was the answer to the division problem, then that means if I take this and if I multiply it by this, it should be equal to 10x squared plus 9x plus 2. Multiply the denominator by the answer, I should get the same thing as the top. The reason that works is because if I take these two things and I divide them, and it's equal to this, then if I multiply both sides, if I multiply both sides by 2x plus 1, then it's going to cancel on the left, and I have 10x squared plus 9x plus 2 is equal to 5x plus 2 times 2x plus 1, which is what we just wrote. So we just need to multiply this back out and make sure that it works. 10x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 2 makes 10x squared plus 9x plus 2. It matches, so we didn't make any mistakes. Let's go to the next one. 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. is being divided by 3x plus 4, so that's on the outside. The first thing we look at is the highest powered variable, which is just an x, 3x. How does this become 6x squared? For the 3 to become a 6, we need a 2. For the x to become x squared, we need x. The reason I know that's how that works is because we're trying to find out what number on top could I put that multiplies back here, 2x times 3x makes 6x squared. And that way, once we do our subtraction step, once we do our subtraction step, it should always give you zero right there. But don't forget, 2x times 4 makes a plus 8x. So we have 5x minus 8x. That's going to make a negative 3x minus 4 because you bring down the next number. You erase the distribution lines, and we go again for 3x to become negative 3x. It's still a 3, and it's still an x, so I have the number 1. The only thing different is the sign. For that sign to change, you have to have a negative 1. Negative 1 times 3x makes a minus 3x. Negative 1 times 4 makes a minus 4. Throw a parentheses, subtract, negative 3x minus negative 3x, those two minus signs are going to make a plus sign, so they cancel out. Negative 4 minus negative 4, two minus signs make a plus sign, it's going to cancel out. 2x minus 1 is the answer. If you wanted to check your answer, you would multiply this by the denominator. 2x times 3x would make a 6x squared. 2x times 4 makes 8x. Negative 1 times 3 x makes a negative 3x, so that's going to make a 5x, and then the 1 and the 4 are going to make a negative 4, so we are right. Eventually you'll be able to do this multiplication in your head, and maybe the division in your head, but the division part's going to have happen after a lot of practice. The multiplication in your head it might come later this year.
This one is slightly different from what you have in your polynomial booklet, but that's just fine. Go ahead and make sure that you write this one down, and you can answer the last two examples in your polynomial booklet after this one. 10x squared plus 16x plus 5. x plus 5 on the outside. What would multiply x to make 10x squared? Well, we need 10 and we need another x. Then we're going to distribute 10x squared. 10x times 5 makes 50x. And we're subtracting. This part makes 0. This part makes a negative 34x plus 5. For x to become negative 34x. For x to become negative 34x, we have to multiply by negative 34. And we don't have to multiply by an x because we only have a power of 1 here and a power of 1 here, so no multiplication by x. If we do this negative 34, that's going to distribute, and it's going to make a negative 34x minus 34 times 5. I need a calculator for that one. Negative 170. Throw those into parentheses, subtract. 0, 5 minus negative 170 means we're actually going to add them. So we have a plus 175. This thing, there is nothing that you can multiply x by that can make 175. Because that's an x, and because this has no x, there is nothing you can multiply by that would make 175. That means that this is the remainder. So I have 10x minus 34 and the remainder we're going to keep it adding it was 175 and 175 could not be divided by x plus 5 so we're just going to leave it. We couldn't take this division any further but you can't just forget about it so you have to just put plus whatever it was. It's a plus because the 175 was positive. If the 175 was a negative number, then we would have minus 175 divided by x plus 5. So we have the part that the division worked out fine with, and we have the part that the division did not work out fine with. This is the remainder. You can see that none of these answer choices match this, so that means, so that means that's why on your polynomial booklet. We didn't include this problem. We had a different problem instead. But you do need to know what to do if it doesn't fit perfectly, so that's why I wanted to show this example to you still with the remainder.